Hello everyone, hope you're doing alright. Uh, I have decided today to do the third Fireside Chat, and um, if you don't know what the Fireside Chat is, or text Fireside Chat, the idea is, is I kind of sit here and talk to members of the community about what they personally want to talk about, and uh, try and get some opinions from you guys instead of, uh, you know, just uh, having to listen to me. A lot of people uh, talk a lot about the fact that, you know, the the average person is not heard enough from in War Thunder, so why not give you a platform? Why not give the average person, the general viewer of the channel, or a general player of the game, an opportunity to come on and either talk about uh, a grievance, or maybe talk about something positive, or maybe some of the news items. I mean, recently uh, we have had the uh, dev server, then we've also had a bunch of dev blogs as well, and there's just a lot going on in War Thunder. <laughs> there always is, normally at this uh, time of year, because obviously update 1.89 is coming out. And for me, I'm looking forward to a lot of stuff. You know, uh, the fact that the ME264 uh, is in the game, the fact that the Americans are getting a lot of new attackers is really cool. The fact that we have a new tech tree in the form of the Imperial Japanese Navy, which the majority of it is looking absolutely baller. Like, it's looking really good. Um, the other stuff as well, uh, when it comes to... Uh, stuff such as the uh, new systems like the uh, laser guidance system on stuff like the uh, oh I can't remember their name now oh I feel awful basically the the highest rockets on the AH ones these you know how they're getting you're able to laser designate a target and then fire and forget a missile like we're 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 starting to go forth into a brave new world <laughs> in War Thunder. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, definitely going to happen. But understand that normally the fireside chats happen on uh, Sundays. And this time, instead, we're just doing it on a Tuesday. Because, obviously, this Sunday we had a dev server. So I was kind of busy uh, with all of the videos that I was making. So, uh, hopefully, if you have either a question or if you have something that you want to ask, you have two choices. Uh, you can either come on the stream itself... And uh, you can find all of the information on the Tech Hub Discord, uh, where you can find, um, you know, how to get onto the stream. And if you don't want to come on the stream but still want to ask a question, you can leave a uh, question in Q&A for Tech, uh, which is obviously on the Discord as well. So we're using the Discord to be able to run all of this stuff. It just makes everything easier from our end. A lot of people have talked about, uh, you know, why don't uh, we uh, get anything from the chats, or, you know, why don't we answer questions from the chast, uh, chats, because it just is an absolute pain uh, to be able to uh, do. Like, I'd, I'm a one-man band when it comes to the stream itself. You know, I have uh, Thomas McLeody, who is our, one of our wonderful trusted occupants, uh, running the, um, running the. I suppose we call it screening <laughs> for the people, but when it comes to me having to look for stuff, you know, it's only me. There isn't a team of people behind me uh, sorting all that stuff out. So, uh, we do have a first question in, and this is from Dar. Uh, weasel and it says for the fireside podcast what ship do you think the usn will receive next in game i've been doing research recently and enjoying the research very much and i've come to the conclusion that i believe that the cleveland class light cruiser will be the next addition what do you think it is definitely possible that uh, we get a machine like a Cleveland class. And if you don't know what a Cleveland class is, I'll try and get it up on the screen for you. The problem uh, that I'm running into uh, when it comes to this uh, these stuff is I'm trying to personally work out uh, where the direction is going to go uh, when it comes to other nations for naval. Because obviously... Uh, what we have is, uh, in naval, you have a situation where you are getting bigger and bigger, right? Japan's just been announced they have two heavy cruisers in it. Uh, this is insane. So, 
are we going to see something which is similar for other nations? Or are we going to see a continuation of what we already had? Which would be stuff like light cruisers, it would be stuff like battle boats and so on. So if you want to know what the Cleveland class is, this is what it is. It uh, was a development of the preceding Brooklyn class cruiser. So it would make sense to come next into the game. It has four triple six inches, uh, so very similar to the Southampton that has just been added on the uh, dev server. Six dual five inches, uh, twenty uh, twelve forty millimeters, and tw and twenty twenty millimeters. And this is the problem, right? So the key bit to always pay attention to, which is what I'm worried about, is the AA armament on these machines. Uh, so the AA armament is uh, the big killer for me <laughs> when it comes to a lot of these machines, because it basically means that uh, you have a situation where uh, the a you take away just a massive part of the game. Like War Thunder was built on the premise of combined forces, and Tanks and ships don't go so well together, so we have to throw an aircraft. We've just seen, added to the uh, dev server, two American aircraft, which are very much heavily designed for naval combat, you know. The Mauler, and also that um, premium machine. So, if we're going to add them in, but then we're going to add stuff which has... 20 20 millimeters on it plus 12 40 millimeters plus six dual 130 millimeters you see the problem here right and also the belt armor is quite thick but it's nothing crazy compared to what we've seen before i think it is definitely possible uh, that we get a machine like this in game uh, i mean we have some very similar uh, machines to it already but it's just it would be incredibly surprising uh, to me that uh, it would be incredibly surprising to me if the next thing we don't see is a heavy cruiser uh, for the Americans or for a different nation. Technically, two nations right now uh, have heavy cruisers. You know, we have the uh, we have the uh, Soviets with their two. Now, I understand there's a little bit of confusion with stuff like the Krasny, but from what I'm doing is basically from the British specification of what a heavy cruiser is, the two big 180 millimeter uh, wielders in the Soviet tree are technically heavy cruisers, right? And then you've obviously got the two which are named in the game as heavy cruisers, which are the two Japanese ones. And I've got a feeling to try and uh, sort out this, you know, to try and fix this issue. Well, not issue, but just a kind of balancing thing. They're going to add heavy cruisers for other nations. Now, I have no idea what you do for the Germans, because the Germans pretty much skipped the idea of what a heavy cruiser is <laughs> and just moved on to what they call a pocket battleship. Uh, so there's going to be some weird and wonderful balancing there <laughs> when it comes to those things. But I do think it is possible uh, that we get machines uh, like the Cleveland. I would be surprised if we don't see a heavy cruiser first, though. Uh, if I'm being completely honest about it. And I think more people would be happy uh, with the heavy cruisers as well. The next question is from Dank Souls. Uh, would you like to see jets at lower battle ratings than the regular jets if their performance is poor enough to justify it? I mean uh, jets such as the P-59 Aero Comet. Yes, I would. And uh, we even have some machines in game. And uh, the... Uh, these machines are stuff like the Yak-15P, uh, I believe it is, and even the HU-162. Like, I am a proponent uh, for a wall between jets and props, and uh, the reason for this is because uh, the high-tier props that we have do not match well up against the, let's call them Meta 70 uh, jets. You know, stuff like the ME262, the F80, uh, stuff like the Kicker even. But I'm completely fine with uh, certain jets being under that barrier. You know, when whenever you put a rule in place, you've got to have a little bit of leeway with it. Because if you just put a wall straight between uh, jets and uh, props, what you end up with is there will just be some jets which are never used. And this, these are stuff like the Yak-17, 
uh, the Yak 15P, the HU 162, uh, and uh, other machines of that nature. So what we have to do is put them on the one side of the brackets, which won't technically make any sense, you know, because uh, they will be jets, but they'll be in a environment which is uh, in completely props. But I think for the general health of top tier props, it is a good idea to put the barrier there. And a lot of people have asked me why, and it's because... Uh, props just do not match up well against jets, and it's not fun gameplay. If you've ever tried to spade the I-225, you'll realize that you get up to it a lot, right? And in that up to you the majority of the time spend it uh, fending off um, jets which are much faster than you and all they do is they look at you they try and head on you they then dodge and then they do it again and again and again this to me is not fun and engaging this to me is whoever gets the first uh, shot in a head-on and yes you can increase your chances of a head-on you know it is possible to do so but it isn't fun and I know that's subjective, uh, but then again, most or majority of opinions are subjective. And it's, it's just how I feel about the scenario. I would much prefer if we had it that the majority of jets faced the majority of jets and the props at a high level fought each other. And I think uh, with additions such as the I-225, the Yak-3U, which uh, is in the files right now, the... Um, uh, what else do we have? The P-51H, uh, the Spitfire Mark 24s, we're getting there. But obviously the issue is the Axis nations, uh, because, well, they lost the war and <laughs> weren't able to produce anything that would be even close to uh, a Mark 24, which was given its proper uh, war emergency power. So, yeah, it's just a simple one like that. The next one is from Ben Shapiro 2, Electric Boogaloo. Uh, why won't Gaijin accept ban appeals? And do you have any insights on when they will start accepting them again? Uh, I have no idea. To be honest, I just kind of stick to the rules. I, I generally think skirting rules is a bad idea because you're just asking for trouble, especially in a system where if you read the rules, it is set up to be kind of subjective. So... The issue that you have is uh, whenever, if, if you're trying to be edgy, let's say, or if you're trying to be, you know, an edgy person, you're always going to land on the wrong side because uh, it is much easier to just deal with you <laughs> than it is to be able to, uh, you know, worry too much about your issues. Like you, when you've got a community which is over 100,000 people, and you have like 50 or 100 people who are being incredibly edgy boys with either their names or with uh, what they're putting in chats. It is so much easier for the company to turn around and just go, prick. There's no, you know, it, 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 it's like getting rid of like a, a 0.001% of the community. And you've got to see it like that. So it's much better in, if you enjoy the game and you enjoy, you know, a lot of the facets of the game, there's, it's much better just to not try and get banned, you know. It's very easy in War Thunder not to get banned, right? You basically uh, don't team kill, don't talk a ton of trash in chat, and that's it. And also don't have a raunchy name. Like, that, that's very simple rules, uh, when you think about it. <laughs> There's, and, and yes, I could definitely say that in the past, I have seen stuff which I would class personally as abuses of powers from the mod team, but understand that those are anomalies in a much larger scale. So, it, it's, it's very hard to... If, if you are in a situation where you need to put in a ban appeal... It is very hard for me to not believe you've been trying to skirt the edge on rules. Why not just stick to the rules and just play the game? Because, unfortunately, at the end of the day, you're only one person against a community of thousands and thousands of people. So you will be seen as innocuous. It is unfortunate, but it is the truth.
Now, as I said before, uh, if you uh, what was I saying? Uh, if you want to come on to the stream and have a chat, uh, you are able to just come along to the tech hub, hit up uh, Thomas McCloudy, and uh, we can uh, have a chat about whatever you want. If you want to talk about the dev server, if you want to talk about news, if you want to talk about anything like that, and uh, also if you want to leave a question for me uh, to go through, make sure to put it in the Q and A for tech on the Discord. And uh, Ben Shapiro 2 says, it's easy to get banned if you're just playing good at the game too. That's not true. Uh, they do... I know, like, a lot of people think, oh, I'm just... Uh, I get reported all the time because I'm amazing at the game and I must be... They must think I'm hacking. And it's like, well, okay. Then they review the reports and they realize you're not hacking. Like... <laughs> <laughs> what what do you want what do you want uh, them to do like it it's as simple as that if you if you have the mindset that you have got banned because you are too good then all i've got to say is that is untrue they can't just ban people for being too good that makes absolutely no sense uh, to do <laughs> in uh, in this situation so yeah I'm definitely uh, not. I'm definitely not down uh, for that. Uh, for that opinion, there. We also got a. Uh, we also got a dead blog today, didn't we? That I haven't really looked at yet for the hunter. And uh, also, if you want to talk about uh, world war mode, that's also a topic that's on a lot of uh, people's uh, lips because there is a. Uh, there is the fact that. When we talk about World War Mode, there's a lot of people who aren't happy with it, and then there's a, a lot of people who are happy with it. And it seems to be the disconnect uh, between squadrons, and also the disconnect uh, between... Uh, what's the word? There, there's the disconnect between people who, who are active in squadrons and then the single players. So, World War Mode is obviously set up to be a place where uh, squadrons battle each other in large-scale engagements, right? That, and uh, you, in squadron battles, you have the scenario of doing a, you know, a minor battle for a minor squadron against another minor squadron. But World War Mode is designed for large squadrons to compete against each other, something that has never been there in, uh, you know, in War Thunder. And I feel like a lot of people, because of the change, are going to be annoyed by this uh, because of the fact that they have to either play differently or the fact that it isn't the same as, you know, what it was before. Like, I've heard a lot of competitive players not liking uh, World War Mode, and I think it's because they'll have to expand their squadrons. They'll have to get away from their niche friends group and explore the community and try and find other players, right? And uh, if they don't do that, then they're going to fail unless, you know, they know life everything, which people will do as well. But the main, the main thing at the end of the day is this is not set up in a way which suits anything that we had before. Uh, it doesn't suit smaller squadrons. It doesn't suit the individual player. What it suits is large squadrons on a large scale. And I think that's good. I think the fact that we have a game mode in War Thunder which suits uh, the, you know, something different, uh, you know, it gets another part of the community involved in it, I like that idea. The only thing, as, uh, the only thing on top of uh, what I'm talking about as well is the fact that um, the tactical side of it is really cool to me. I really, really enjoy... Hi, B. Uh, I really, really enjoy the tactical side of World War Mode. I think it's a really nice addition to the game. It brings a new flavor to the game. And also, as somebody who's interested in RTS stuff, you know, I enjoy it. I think people will slowly but surely start enjoying it more when they realize that you'll have to come together. I've said for many years... That War Thunder is a team game which is run by individual players, right? It is a game where uh, the individual uh, rules supreme. 
And uh, But as an individual, you can carry a game and still lose in War Thunder, which is why it can be incredibly frustrating to play a lot of the time. And therefore, for me, uh, it is nice to have a mode where the individual player in each battle does still matter a lot, but the cooperation of the team and the cooperation of the squadron is much, much more important than the individual player. It, it feels like you're part of this larger thing, which is something that we haven't had in War Thunder. Instead, what we've had is situations where uh, it has literally just been... Oh, uh, can you kill that guy over there? Okay, well, you've killed that guy, you've won a flank. And uh, hopefully your team has won the other flank. And if they haven't, well, you've lost. So uh, it's just... Uh, it is just how it is. There are definitely issues uh, with the game mode. I think... Uh, personally, if you, if you want it to be more of a competitive mode, you would have to uh, lock the... Uh, uh, you would have to either do one of two things. You would have to make it so random players can't join the top echelon uh, battles from teams, or you would have to uh, make it so the uh, it would be completely randomized. So instead of being able to pick and choose which operation you go into, you would have to uh, be able to uh, instead of yeah instead of uh, doing the uh, being able to pick and choose what operation you go into, you would have to do it randomly. So you just click a button, you would say which side you would want to fight on, and then it would just plonk you into a match. So have a secondary matchmaking system uh, for it to work. Uh, otherwise, uh, otherwise it is open to abuse, and that is something we've seen uh, recently. Sorry, my wife has just uh, emailed me, so I'm just making sure everything's all right. Fortunately, wife comes first uh, for you guys, <laughs> and she always will. Uh, let's see. There we go. Okay. But yeah, I think um I think people are looking at it wrong, uh, to be honest. Or they're not they're not looking at it how it's supposed to be set up, and that's fine. You know, it, it just it is how it is. Uh here we go. Chapa Chapasku or Chapasku says, Do you think that there will be any more vehicles added for one point eight nine, or is all the vehicles in the dev server final? Well, one of the things that we see uh, constantly is uh, that we have a situation where on the first and second dev server, there are already always vehicles added. Uh, so remember update 1.87. Uh, the Leopard technically wasn't on the first dev server. <laughs> it, was, it was there in spirit, and I, I even did a video on it, but it wasn't technically there. The patch before that, uh, we had a bunch of planes added to the uh, trees, and you always get more vehicles the second time around. The only question is, will we have more vehicles on top of the ones which were found in the files? The Type 16, the H1S, the Yak-3U, and also the uh, the, Fla the Flarak PZ, or <laughs> however you say it. I, I'll never get it right. You know, that that's an awful, awful uh, thing. But anyway, uh, we're going to have our first uh, caller on now. And our first caller is, of course, Super Cacti. So I'll uh, make sure to uh, set, make sure that every make sure that everything is set up, and of course, everything is broken on me. Anyway, uh, you are unmuted, buddy. How are you doing today? Yes. I am doing good. How are you? Ah, uh, you know, I've just realised that the majority, all the, uh, the, all the widgets, right? The widgets on Streamlabs always break for me, so I'm gonna have to try and fix them now. <laughs> anyway, what, what is, uh, what is your question, query, or interesting thing you? I want to have a discussion today? about artillery vehicles. Artillery, like, okay. How you could add them into the game and stuff like that. So, do you mean, uh, do you mean with a separate like uh, aiming system and all of that, or do you mean just in general, really? Uh, in general, and I have a little idea for like some sort of a aiming mechanic in the game. So okay. I, I guess I'll, I guess I'll start with that actually. Yeah, go ahead. So 
we have the scouting mechanic in Warfare. It's basically you just scout an enemy and he gets pinged on the map and all that stuff. Let's yeah. say artillery vehicles get a more detailed description on where that enemy is. So let's say uh, a light tank scouts an enemy tank, and then that artillery vehicle, let's say I'm the artillery vehicle, I get like uh, the amount of degrees and the exact heading I'm going to have to aim in. It's not an arcade aiming radical, but you sort of get like directions. Like, right. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I understand. So that, like with that information, you'll be able to know where you're going to have to shoot. And we're talking about artillery vehicles here, so like it's like big fat HEs, so you will be able to, I don't know, track them. And if you get a direct hit, you got to like that was just a little idea that came up into my mind thinking about like an indirect fire way for the artillery vehicle. So basically, a scout or a light tank scouts a target, and once that vehicle is scouted, then the artillery can get a more accurate shot from a top-down point of view, or will it use the map to be able to shoot, or how would that work? Uh, I would say, like, when they go into the sniper view, or just the aiming view, mm. they would get, like, uh, the amount of degrees and which heading they're going to have to shoot, they're going to have to aim at, and, of course, the distance and all. Like, I don't know how exactly you want to implement it, but they'll get, like, the information they're going to need. Yeah, to me, that makes sense. Uh, the the only The only other way you could really do it uh, without setting up a system like that, would be to try and uh, kind of do what they already do. So stuff like the Sturm Panzer, I mean, I suppose you could say the Avery, even though it's not really an artillery vehicle, but we, we do have a few artillery vehicles in the game, the Lorraine 15, the Lorraine 155. Uh, so you could effectively, if you really wanted to, uh, set it up in a way so it was just you know look just just normal uh aiming without any of these bells and whistles right like do, do we need a new system of aiming for these vehicles in order for them to be effective like uh, do do you think it's required uh for it it's not required like i have the lorraine 155 myself and it's well, it's hilarious to play and you can kill heavy tanks so it's not required, but making them like artillery vehicles with just no actual uh, additional mechanic and stuff. They're basically just tank destroyers at that point, and I think that's a bit of a shame. They're artillery yeah. vehicles for a reason, so if they have something special about it, it actually makes them their own class. Because why would you play an artillery vehicle if you can actually play a tank destroyer like the SU 152 and get proper APHE shells? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, I agree with you on that point. Are you worried uh, that they... Well, every time I think about artillery pieces, I think about that monstrosity, uh, that that American monstrosity with the... Is it the 155? Well, it's not 155. <laughs> the Long Tom it's, or whatever think, it's called. I think you're talking about the T-92. It has yes. a 240 mil gun. Yeah, that monstrosity. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> the... <laughs> The, uh, the, oh, finally I fixed it, but the, <laughs> the issue is, uh, that I think of is, what, because I, I believe that thing, actually, no, I'm not going to go into that, but the, the fact is, will we get to a point where if we add in a new system, either based around scouting or, or similar to the world, uh, world of tank system, do you think it would just annoy people from being able to get shot, you know, uh, without without them being able to fire back? Because I, re I remember back in the day, you don't really see it too much nowadays, but a lot of people would get annoyed at um, artillery for killing them without, you know, r without being able to fight back, right? Now it just seems like it's an accepted thing, but... Uh, with also helicopters, which came out over the last year or so, a lot of people were annoyed that there was no counter to them. Do you think this may be an issue if we implement a system uh, like that for artillery? It will be a problem. I mean, of course, everybody's going to complain that they can just get attacked out of nowhere with like pinpoint accuracy at this point. Yeah. But I think 
the the huge reload that comes with the, these artillery vehicles. I mean, think about that T ninety two. It has like I don't know six crew members in the turret, but that's still a two hundred and forty mil round. They're gonna have to reload. I'm at least thinking fifty seconds here, but uh, when it comes to like what the people will accept, I think yeah, it, it, it's it's difficult to balance. And that's mm. why I came up with that scouting mechanic idea, because that way you cannot just dunk on anybody on the map. That yeah. person does have to get scouted by someone else. Yeah, I, I think it's a good idea, but I'm worried about the, I'm worried about the fact that it would be one of the first mechanics in game where it would require a specific vehicle to be fully efficient or even efficient at all. So if, if you look at all the other mechanics, such as uh, the scouting mechanic or the artillery mechanic, these are you adding... You cut out for me. What oh, sorry. Uh, I don't know why it does this, but anyway, I'm back. Uh, the, <laughs> the, um, if, if you look at like the scouting mechanic or the artillery mechanic, what you see from these mechanics is they add on to pre-existing ideas and uh, they don't they 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 don't uh, necessitate anything or they don't uh, get rid of anything whereas if you add in this artillery mechanic you need scouts on your team to be effective but you can't control if there are any scouts on your team so to fix this we would either have to give people more scouts which i would agree with or we would have to make it so they would still be able to fire, just maybe at a decreased accuracy or something like this uh, across the map, which I think is also possible. But you can't... I don't think we're in a situation where in order for one mechanic to work uh, the most efficiently it can, you have to rely on another sub-mechanic, which, uh, which won't always be there unless obviously you're squatted up. Yeah, and actually about squad it up. May mm. You could maybe give that some some sort of a spotting mechanic for uh, like independent squad teammates. So when you're squatting up with buddies, even though they're in a heavy tank, when they see an enemy, they can still give you that information you need to shoot at it. But it's only for like your squad members. Mm. But yeah. that's just a little idea. Like that will I don't know. Yeah, it, it'll make squads more common, or squads with one guy in an artillery vehicle more common. Yeah, and uh, you could even... I've just thought about this. What if you, instead of uh, just the scouting mechanic, the way that you can make it uh, available for every machine is uh, you could also tie it to pinging on the map. You, uh, sorry, you cut out yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could also tie it to uh, pinging on the map. So in oh, yeah. So, yeah, so that would be a way to open it up so it isn't as reliant on a specific mechanic. So it, it is possible. Uh, you know, you could do it. It'll be interesting to see when we get stuff like the Vesp or the Hommel or the Bishop, you know, the Priest, you know, if, if well, if we ever do get those vehicles, I, it will be wonderful to see how they do it, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of worried, but also at the same time, I, I'm intrigued. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what I would really like to see is in the World War mode, they use artillery vehicles on certain operations, and it would be nice to see them available for the World War mode. So you yes. could have one, like like the we do in the elite squad, you have one group leading the assault, the other guy defending, and then you could have one smaller squad all the way in the back in artillery vehicles and just lobbing shells across the entire map. Yeah. Or even smoke shells. I believe some of the artillery vehicles have smoke shells. Uh, they should do, yeah. Uh, massive smoke barrages, which is something that's been brought up quite a few times. You know, the even if you didn't want to add them to artillery pieces, you know, the idea of um, uh, instead of you, you know, you have two types of artillery to pick. You can either pick the normal one or some kind of smoke barrage. I think that would be kind of fun. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, it's that topic that got the pass to the developers, right? Hmm. Yeah. The only thing I'm worried about is frame rate. Uh, I, I don't know how anybody's <laughs> PC is going to last, but we'll, <laughs> we'll have to see, you know. Anyway, uh, do you yeah. have any uh, last thoughts uh, for the chat? As always, Cacti, it is always lovely to talk to you. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to join last week, but I got other shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, uh, hopefully you can join us again pretty soon. I hope you have a good day, brother. See you later. Yeah, you too. Take care. And next on the list, we have Skellig. And I'll uh, bring him in now. And now we have Skellig. I'll just unmute you, brother. How are you doing today? I am all right now. Ah, wonderful stuff. Uh, uh, how's yourself? How's yourself? Well, you know, uh, it's been it's been a busy few days. I think we can put it like that. Uh, you know, I think I've uploaded about thirty videos or some ridiculous uh, thing like that. Shocking, that the amount. <laughs> shocking, is it? <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, it is how it is. Anyway, what's your question, query, or discussion point? Let's get started. All right, all right. So, uh, I think I mentioned it a bit like last time. Yeah. But, um, yeah. It just sort of became more relevant with the. Uh, with the um, dev server videos that have been coming out, we've seen tanks like the ADATs being added, uh, Russia with its Tunguska, we've yeah, seen the Flak yeah. Panzer, and uh, I believe the French are getting the Roland, and you know Britain are getting the Stormer or whatever it is. Uh, Italy have an Automatica, which is an amazing anti-air. But do you think we'll see absolutely anything, any sort of anti-air like that, anti like with missiles and that for Japan? Japan's an interesting one, isn't it? Because uh, I know of two systems which have uh, anti-air missiles, and the problem with the problem with the ones which are much more modern is that they require a secondary vehicle to act as radar. But yeah. there is one, and I can't remember its exact name, but it, it's like a jeep which has attached to it anti-air missiles, and I'll try and find. Oh, the. Right um... Type 93. Is that what it is? Yeah, type and type 93, Sam, and you should get it, I think. Type 93 what, sorry? Oh. Uh, oh, I can't remember. Anyway, but the the main thing is, as you said, uh, the, that is the only one I can think that's available, right? Like, uh, out, of, out of the Japanese vehicles? Well... I mean, the, I think probably the easiest that they can add, and, and like it's not even a new vehicle or anything, is just the secondary warhead the, uh, for the Type 79 missile on the Type 89 IFV, which is a fragmentation proximity missile. And I think having that would just be easier than, a, than another vehicle, as it's just be a modification. But would it have radar tracking? Uh I'd probably say not, because, again, it, you know, it's just on the Type 89, to be fair. Yeah. So it, it, it would yeah. just be, you know, no radar, just visuals, guiding it in yourself and no else. Because um, I, th I think that would definitely be a, a quick fix uh, to the issue that we already have. But the, the question is, with the fact that... Uh, here, I'll just get the Type 89 up. This little baby. So the... the so, so, Huh? Oh, go on. Yeah. Go on. Sorry. Well, the the fact the fact is that um, we we have a situation in War Thunder where at top tiers, I don't think Japan ever will. I don't think Japan will ever get on its uh, own team by itself, right? Uh, I think it will always be yeah, folded think... into others. Now, I I'm not a proponent of this, but it is at least uh, an interesting thought where. If you have a nation such as Japan, which is never going to be on its own team, is it required? Is it required to give it a let's call it a SAM system? Because there should always be ones available for it anyway, in the form of its allies. Well, like, I, I think, like, yeah, it's a, it's a good point that one. I mean, why add something when it's already added for another nation? But I also think just for the uh, the play base of that nation, j just to also get it, it just round off the game for me in general. Just, you know, all of them have some sort of anti-missile yeah, system that can be used, you know, for their own nation at the grind. Oh, I, I completely agree. I think, I mean, my the way I see it is every nation should have a parity of mechanics, uh, which means yeah. that every nation should have... Uh, access to the same mechanics as every other nation at a similar level, and you, yeah, uh, hmm? yeah, yeah I'm just yeah, yeah. That. and uh, you 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 have you were completely right that this last dev server 
we seem to have got that apart from for Japan. <laughs> like Japan, yeah, Japan is the odd one out. Again. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> the question is, you know, do do we address that or do we maybe give it an advantage in another area? They still technically have after this update, you know, the best jet in the game. Uh, they have a pretty comparable tank, you know, their, their IFV, I think, I, I would say their IFV, IFV is the best in the game, uh, out of the other ones, so is that enough, or would you still, you know, push for this parity? I definitely would. <clears throat> yeah, I, th I think pushing, just, just, again, like, back to the, the, uh, the modification for the missile, I think if it can be added... And like it has been used and you, you know there's a lot about it that you can find i mean you know why shouldn't it be added because it is it is like a system again to be added for japan like everyone else has and as for the best jet i mean i mean yeah is it i believe japan has the first heavy cruisers in the game and you know we see this with a lot a lot of things they get the type 90 which was amazing they had the t2 which is amazing and now they get the first heavy cruisers but i also think if something can be added it definitely should be because we do see a huge lack of 10.0s in Japan, as we know. Yeah, I agree. Uh, like I'd, I think, um, uh, as you said, the heavy cruisers being added is really nice. Like, it's... Uh, uh, the the, heav the heavy cruisers are, are, are really nice to be added, but we're, we're seeing... We're just... It's odd with Japan because they they have so many nice toys, but they don't they don't have all of the nice toys. It, it reminds me kind yeah, of yeah. now with America, where their their MBT is kind of falling behind a little bit, and I don't think anyone will ever be happy uh, of the state of Japan. But I think it's it's probably in one of the best positions it's ever been in uh, when when it comes to the game. Like it it has two of its trees out of three have top tier top meta vehicles and that's insane like that the, for one nation to have that is crazy good i mean yeah for sure i mean like the type 90 probably one of the strongest mm. and you know it is a it is an incredibly powerful tank but you look at other nations i mean i'm not just i'm not just saying this I mean, I think uh, Britain also suffers a bit for this as well, mm. and, and, and the mm. French. But you look at nations like um, Germany got a couple, Russia and uh, America, you know, they've got a complete lineup of 10.0s. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the Type yeah. 90 is good and all, but the second it's dead, you, you're, you're in an 8.7. Like, for me, I, uh, like, yeah, the Type 90 is amazing, but the lineup for it's a bit weak. Yeah, I agree. And uh, we. We, we're seeing with nations uh, such as Italy, such as uh, France, and I suppose with Britain as well, we're slowly getting there with the MBTs, right? Like the, the French are getting the Leclerc, we now have two Ariettes. Uh, hopefully there's like a secondary version of the Type 90, or as many have said, the Type 10. The British, you know, you've got yeah. the MBTs, but they're struggling with the helicopter front or, you know, other fronts. So it's getting there. It's getting there slowly. And I can definitely see the frustration of people uh, because it hasn't been what we would call balanced, well, for two years uh, or even longer. Uh, yeah. but, but it's getting there, you know? It's finally, finally getting there. I mean, like, for me, the real frustration comes when you look on a, a new dev blog or something yeah. and you see yeah. America get about three new tanks, Russia get about five. <laughs> and Japan get like some some scrap off a plate. Well, I mean, then this this update should be wonderful for you because oh, yeah, the, sure. the Japanese yeah. are getting uh, you know yeah. a ton of vehicles, yeah. or at least uh, the, at least they are when it comes to the naval stuff. And uh, what are they're getting the J five? Are they getting any ground vehicles? I'm not sure they are. I mean, there's a Type sixteen in the uh, files, isn't there? Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, the Type so sixteen. So it could be that this patch. Mm, yeah, that'll be fun. That'll that'll give yeah. some uh, different gameplay for the, yeah, the top I'd, I'd love that. I love that. Anyway, uh, do you have any last comments? And oops, uh, do you have any last comments? And as always, it's lovely to chat to you, bud. Nice to hear a ah, nice you too, mate. Hear a, yeah, nice to nice to hear a, a voice that sounds friendly to me. Uh, in these, uh, I trust in these, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, as a as a final comment, someone made fun of a mic and chat. He called it a 1950s mic, and it really hurt me. And I'd like him to apologise. <laughs> All 
<laughs> right. Well, whoever did that, apologise to Skellig and understand that Poundland is a British uh, tradition. I do that. It sells quality goods. Yeah, it sells quality, quality goods. goods. Quality customers. Yeah, and we won't have we won't have any bad words about Poundland. I uh, chew that. I'll keep on watch for that. All right. <laughs> see you later, bud. I right, see you later, mate. Nice day. <laughs> uh, so the next caller uh, that we have on is Tommy. Now Tommy is a Scottish lad with a wonderful accent, and I'll make sure to unmute him now. How are you doing, Tommy? How is life? Um. I'm doing fine. Could say uh, the same to yourself. Oh, I'm doing all right. You know, uh, just uh, I'm I'm a little bit little bit tired from all the dev service stuff, but I'm I'm still cracking. I'm still going. Aye, I mean, fair enough. The dev server stuff will take its toll on a lot of folk. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, a lot of information. The thing I'm wanting to ask, or well. It's not really ask, it's more along the lines of a discussion about the Stormer HVM. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm actually worried about the playstyle uh, of what people are used to currently. Uh, like Stuff like the Tunguska, they're used to having guns and missiles and being able to just shoot at tanks as well. Yeah. And I'm speculating the playstyle because obviously it's not in the game yet uh, for the ADATS and people are um, basing... Uh, stuff off of that and they're trying to bring that into line with the Tunguska if right. that sounds right yeah it makes sense to me aye but you, you so you, you're worried that people are going to use the Stormer like they would the Tunguska or the ADATs um, yes right. Um, because it's mainly set with missiles and only designed for one purpose, which is taking out air. Whilst, yes, it could take out um, lightly armoured vehicles uh, like the ZSU-23 or the Tunguska itself. But when they're trying to take out uh, tanks, they're not going to be at a far enough range. They're going to literally try and derp it in the side, as per usual is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it, it definitely... Out, out of the vehicles... Out of the vehicles that have been added, it should definitely be seen as one of them which is more AA focused than the others. I think the ADATS by the ADATS is way over there, right? It it is by itself Aye. as this ridiculous conglomeration of tank killer, plane killer. So that's in its own, you know, bit over there. Uh, when we have a look at these new systems, like the Roland uh, for the French, uh, the Stormer, and also the uh, the German one, which is in the files, those have to be seen as only designed to kill planes and nothing else. And if, if, no. if people get this idea in their head that this is going to be, as you said, similar to the Tunguska or similar to the uh, Bradley ADATs, that's just, it's, it's not true. And you're going to see a lot of them run around and get killed very, very quickly if they decide to Aye. try that play style. <clears throat> I mean, it's... I could say it's similar to, like, um, the Challenger 2. People are trying to say that it's a brawler, but it's not. Mm. You have to sit back. It's the same with the Stormer HVM. You have to sit back, and you have to just be looking out for air. Yeah, there's there's going to be somewhat similar in the sense. There's going to be no aggression with the Stormer. Uh, the on, the only aggression it has is going to be annihilating anything that's in the in the air. Uh, but the I, I am if if we have a look at top tier Britain, right? We we have so many defensive vehicles. I mean, even the Hunter, which is which is getting added, that to me is a Aye. defensive vehicle as well. Like there <laughs> there there isn't a lot of it's... <laughs> offensiveness, you know. I mean, if uh, when if and when they do get added uh, helicopters, mm. we don't ve have very many attacking helicopters as well. <laughs> so <laughs> oh. it's, it's, we're kind of limited because the RAF, in their wisdom, or should I just say the MOD in their infinite wisdom, um, they decided to go with logistics because logistics was, is more important uh, for obviously long term. And then they decided to go with attacking capabilities. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to 
um, mostly ground vehicles and the anti-air. It's all defense. It's not for attacking. Yeah. And I think um, what kind of uh, interests me as well is something that they mentioned on the uh, the tw- the Twitch channel when they were kind of doing like l- that preview for update one point eight nine, where they said that this thing Got can't it. be tracked from the air. It has a some form of passive radar system, which means that it can't be locked onto from the air. And I just yes, wondered. Yes, it has. It has something called an ADAD, um, which is that little infrared dome on top in yeah. between the missiles which hasn't been modeled yet but if you look in uh, most of the pictures of it you'll see that there's a little dome sitting in between the foldable uh, semicircular bars yeah someone's already done a bug report on that and that was part of the tracking system uh, that just passively uh, put infrared rays- lasers out and just you know tracked it yeah so that means and, um i mean with uh, with with the addition of things like that, we also have the confirmation that I believe it's the H one Z, and I'm not sure if any other helicopters have it. They're finally getting laser designated weaponry, right? Uh, yeah. Do you think with machines like the Stormer, we're going to have a situation where it's going to be great for like one update and then we're going to get something in game which is bigger and badder to deal with them or do you think it will be a staple for a very long time for the ter- for the current time being i'll say um it'll kind of be like a staple just for the time being until they decide to bring in something that can counter it mm. but at the moment um from what we know from all the sources on this sort of technology is there is no current countermeasure to it so it's it's kind of it's kind of a half and half really yeah uh, yeah that well i mean the to me the the to me the counter to it is munitions which are able to go further than it. But generally, those munitions would not be able to lock onto this damn thing. Uh, but you could just guide it in manually, which I'm sure is an option they'll add in the game. And also, there's Aye. the issue of how big maps are, right? Like we're what the range of this thing is what seven kilometers or or something. Yes, it's, it's seven around... kilometers for Star Streak One, and Star Streak Two got uh, an even further range. Yeah, so that's that's massive <laughs> when it comes to you know war yeah, the ground yeah. maps. Like they they would have to push back uh, spawns of aircraft and stuff. And I'm sure you know they they can do that if they want to. Can't be too hard to do. No, yeah, maps maps do need to be sorted for uh, top tier. Um, it's just two knife and dagger uh, fights. Uh, I mean, yeah. Don't get me wrong. Uh, close quarters battles are fine and dandy. That's just for people who want to generally punch each other in the face. <laughs> <laughs> um, whereas with the top tier, you can snipe for miles or kilometers, whichever, wherever you are in the place of the world. Um, you can snipe for ooh, donkeys. I mean, <laughs> I can make a shot from um, my base to heli that's sitting like what? more than six kilometers out which i can't make with my <laughs> chieftain marksman because it's just not got the range yeah, yeah i can yeah. lock onto it i can get the lead indicator but then nothing <laughs> but uh, yeah maps do need to be sorted and they need to be uh, bigger for these sort of vehicles because obviously the helicopters will need to have the chance to actually be used the way they were made to be used which is down more sneaky pop up uh, behind trees. Now the only different, the only thing that comes to my mind is how will they actually get the radar to not lock onto you behind the trees because that's what's currently happening uh, at the moment. Well, did you see the? Um, there was a screenshot of. Hello, Bernard. Uh, there was a screenshot of. Um... I can't. It was radar from a top tier plane. I can't remember what it was, but it showed interference on the ground, uh, and it, and uh, this was obviously on the dev server. Hey Bernard, come here, buddy. Uh, and I'm wondering if would you be able to put in a system like that uh, for the radar on the ground? 
instead of from the air and just make the interference the trees and everything like that and work it through that idea yes that would actually um be fair because the helicopters and planes will have something to counteract the laser the, like any laser signatures or radar and that plays into their play style where they can get up close and then you have to actually physically guess them where they're coming from and before you know it you could either kill them or you die simple as yeah 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 i think you're right about I mean, that having, sorry i was just messing with the cat having the inter that's all right um having the interference for trees mountains houses you name it it all comes into play with a uh, radar because it just it diffuses the uh, uh, signals uh, that the radar gives off yeah because so uh, it can't go on so it can't get a defined target to lock on to I think the the biggest the biggest issue for me right now, uh, which, which is one which all ties into this, is the fact that uh, these ground AAs can lock onto machines through the floor and uh, also through trees and stuff. So once that's fixed, and rocks and yeah and <laughs> and rocks and mountains <laughs> and everything, so hopefully uh, in the future that's fixed. And I think that would give way more. Uh, well, way more chance for helicopters to do stuff. I don't think against the Stormer it will give that much chance, but maybe against uh, stuff like the ADATS, which has slightly slower, you know, uh, missiles instead of these uh, the Stormer ones, which just God, the the Star Trek missiles are inc crazy fast uh, in in oh, no. on the desert. Back three point six. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> like how do you do anything? Twelve hundred and fifty meters a second. From what it said on the dev server, which uh, translates to Mac three point six, <laughs> which is ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, people people will say that they'll they'll be easily um, avoidable, mm. but you're trying to dodge something that is about three times the size. Well, three times the size. <laughs> okay, I don't know why I said size, <laughs> but yes, three times the speed of um, say fastest jet in the game yeah. which is the t2 and yes i will admit you can sometimes outmaneuver them because i believe when they were first uh, test trialing the star streak missile it was a bit hard to actually lock onto the target and then they counteracted that with uh, the three darts and the laser grid system that um fails themselves uh, brought out a video um and explains uh, how it works yeah and therefore, you've got more of a chance of hitting the target with three than just one. Yes. Yeah, it's. Um, I think uh, if we're just talking about raw AA, I definitely think this uh, machine is uh, the best one in the game now, um, compared to the others. And it, it's nice to. It's nice to. What I'm interested in is how the laser system will actually come into play with a lot of other um, stuff like the helicopters how will i actually get working correctly because currently at the moment from the dev server footage um i believe you've seen this yourself the the sites don't exactly match up with um what it is because the missile itself should be able to um beam right which corrects its thing and currently you have to um aim forward like an atgm yes yeah, it's um, uh, everything is. Uh, I don't think they've added in a new system for how it's guided. Uh, Aye. I just think it's. Uh, I just think they've copied the other one. But as as you said, like first dev server, anything's possible from this point. You know, <laughs> it's just. Uh, it, stuff it is stuff happens to change here and there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and uh, uh, let's. Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Sorry, my cat's just being annoying. Uh, the uh, oh, that's all right. Do you have any uh, last uh, comments you want to say to the chat or the stream while we uh, move on to the next person? And once again, thank you, Tommy, for coming on. It's always nice to hear you, bud. Thank you. Uh, to the chat. No, I'm not Scottish koala. I'm from <laughs> Fife. He is from Glasgow or Glasgow area. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See you later, bud. All right. See ya. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, Tommy's great. Uh, he, he actually came along in... Uh, good morning, uh, Kaza. Uh, but he came along during the Battlefield Engineer event and slotted into the, the voice channels very well. Lovely to chat to. So the next person that we have uh, along on the list is Ben Shapiro 2, uh, Electric Boogaloo. So I'll just make sure to unmute you, bud. And let's have hey, a hey. chat. Hey, bud, how you doing? I'm doing all right. How about you? Ah, uh, you know, surviving. What's your question, query, or discussion point? Let's get this started. So I come from a smaller squadron. I have 48 people in here. Uh, we only have 30 that have played squadron battles with us. Right. And I think a feature that should be implemented is not having to have eight people exactly to queue up for a squadron battle, but more like at least have five or six. Because for us smaller squadrons, it's it's really hard to get eight people online when you're... A, well, first of all, you're low... Uh, hold on, let me turn this down. I have you in the background. I can hear myself. <laughs> uh, we're, we are... Uh, low requirement so I mean we're not like you have to be online right now or whatever yeah. so people are just come online they come and go but we always have this problem where we're we have seven people in the squad but we can't run it because we only have seven so it'd be so great if we could go against people or squads of eight or smaller squads even if we don't have enough people because we're nobody else is going to be affected by it we're just putting our own squad on the line so you would you would personally uh prefer to handicap yourself than to play at all that's what you're saying basically right yeah 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 like, okay cuz i mean sometimes you have we've had people we've had our entire squad die at the beginning of the game and then i mean we've clutched the game so why can't we just start without <laughs> a full squad no i i understand uh, i actually i i agree with you you should be able to take in less players but i understand why they don't do it because you could easily set up scenarios where you just create a bunch of feeder squadrons and these feeder squadrons only have one or two people in them and they queue up at the same time as the top echelon squadrons, and they just fight each other, and they just die straight away, and those top echelon mm. squadrons would just abuse the system, so they would, you know, just keep gaining points, even though they're not really fighting yeah. anyone. Because if, if I've learned anything from the squadron battle scene, and a lot of the top echelon players, they are very dedicated to winning, and nothing really else. Uh, so the 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 uh, the moral side of it kind of goes out the window in favor of let's win, you know. So that that would be my only issue. Another thing, what about this idea, right? So obviously the the solution to the issue is to get more members into your squad, and uh, through you know talking to more people, maybe even if you personally want to be in more squadron battles, maybe join another squad. But what about a system like they have in World War mode, where you could either set up a battle and then wait for five minutes and see who out of your squad you know joins after getting pinged, or it fills with randoms at a certain level. Like, it, let's say you have to have a minimum of six out of eight players on your squadron team, and then two people can get auto-filled into that squadron battle. Do you think that could be interesting? Oh, yeah. And that instead of, like, having randoms, another thing you could do is uh have allied squadrons maybe so you could be like hey we're down a guy can you spare one and mm. then somebody else can queue up with you yeah uh, but then the problem becomes the same thing with the first thing uh, that they could just boost but we would have to make or they would have to make it so that if allied squad or squadrons are allied they cannot play against each other to pre prevent that issue yeah 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 i mean the back in the day uh, when it came to 
uh, squadrons. I don't know if uh, how you know how long you've played the game, but there used to be situations where you would have five sister squadrons, right? Uh, where just wait, my wife's just got home. I'll be right back. All right. Hey, say hi to everyone. Go on. You can hi. do it. <laughs> what? Why are you so scared? I think there is a spider on me. <laughs> well, hopefully it's gone. I'm going to do my hair. All right, okay. I'll see you in a bit. All right, I'm back. Uh, the uh, the idea is, is yeah, there, there was, like, situations where... Oh, there was situations where... Why is he gone? 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 Anyway, I'll finish the thought. Uh, so there were situations where you would have like five or six sister squadrons, and then they would fight. Uh, they would fight each other, right, for squadron points or in practices. And there was a reason why Gaijin dissolved all of that stuff because it was very easy to abuse the system. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of as simple as that. Uh, and unfortunately, either I've dropped or Ben Shapiro's dropped, but I would like to say thank you for coming on. And uh, he always, I've, I've talked to him only a few times, Ben Shapiro too, but he has got a, he has got a wonderful way with words, and I hope to chat to him more in the future. Uh, he's definitely one of those community members that does have a lot of insights about different and interesting uh, topics. Uh, when it comes to it. Anyway, uh, let's get the next guy on. The next person on, and probably the last, is Sif Does Discord. Now, Sif is one of our trusted occupants. He's a lovely guy. And uh, let's have him on last to finish off the show in a wonderful way. You're now unmuted, Sif. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine, thanks, Tech. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, so what do you want to talk about today, Seth? I want to talk about the potential for the spotting mechanic on certain aircraft in the game. So, hmm, interesting. So taking the, the light tank spotting mechanic and adding it to aircraft which either were more reconnaissance aircraft in real life or maybe need a little bit of boost in the game. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Yes, and also mainly for hydroplanes as well, because I believe this is a mechanic that could mainly work in naval if they ever added larger ships, and uh, hence larger those larger ships. For example, if you wanted to spot an enemy fleet, you could have your reconnaissance aircraft spot the enemy fleet. And an excellent way around this is if the reconnaissance planes maps close, the enemy AA, would, well, the enemy ship AA would do what enemy ship AA does, and, well, they won't be a plane for much longer. Yeah, I, I really like the idea of this uh, recon plane angle. Like, uh, they, they just added in the PB3, uh, the, the PBM3, sorry, and then we have stuff like the OS2U, yes, the, Mariner. Uh, the, yeah, the Mariner, and then even stuff like bow fighters and things like that. Like the, There are so yeah. many aircraft which we use for either naval reconnaissance or some form of reconnaissance, and the only question is, what or how would it work, or how would it give you... Uh, an advantage would it just spot the person in the sky or spot the person on the ground and just put an arrow over their head or would it maybe uh, do something else it could again mainly for a naval approach it could also offer the range of the enemy ships like a rough estimate of the range so not a uh, and you know um, that uh, skill increasing with the skill that uh, you know, the um, plane spotter has, you know, like I have commanding, tank loading and stuff, and G tolerance, it could be uh, one for spotting as well. Yeah, that could be. And uh, with that, you get accuracy from like one kilometer to maybe half a kilometer to even a hundred meters or so within range. You could also technically apply it to ground battles uh, in the effect that you would have 
you would have lightly armoured vehicles and uh, you'd have like light tanks uh, giving a fairly accurate representation but a light tank and a spotter plane are working in unison to give a pinpoint accurate uh, location and maybe if they ever added artillery vehicles you could have them f find like you no know, spotter locations and have the artillery only then able to fire upon them okay the the other thing uh, that uh, has been brought up a few times and uh, this is in relation to helicopters. Uh, so kind of, you know, kind of airplanes, but not really. Uh, the idea of having unarmed helicopters be scout uh, helicopters. So they're basically doing what you're talking about, but they aren't. They don't have a secondary way of defending themselves. Would you be okay hmm. with adding in recon planes or scouting helicopters, which had no way of... Uh, well, fighting an enemy. Instead, they were completely just dedicated to scouting and nothing else. It's something I definitely would not object to. No, I mean, uh, I, one plane, for example, would be the Arado AR-196. Uh, and the only one to any armaments was the a Zero, which was only armed with a single MG-15 at, at the rear seat for defense. Okay, uh, so uh, similar to something like the B5N2 that we have in game, apart from obviously it's yeah, more designed to uh, more designed to recon. Yeah, I mean uh, another thing as well, uh, going down the recon idea, is uh, we've had an explosion into radar. Unfortunately, this update uh, there doesn't, at least for now, there doesn't seem to be that much expansion of radar for other vehicles. What about yeah. uh, vehicles like, I think it's the MB-175 uh, or something similar, but they have air-to-ground radar. So uh, what this means is obviously they have a radar on their plane and it looks at the ground. It pinpoints where the enemies are on the ground. Would you set up a system where uh, either with squad mates or with your teams, if you got over a part of the battlefield and were able to look at the ground, would you want that radar signature be translated into scouting for that aircraft? Most will be a very interesting system to implement. And again, it could also be, um, it could be skill-based, but it could also be modification-based with like improved optics, etc. Yeah, I think it, it could work pretty well. I'm a little bit worried about the balance of it, uh, because obviously... If you could scout the whole enemy team at once, it would be, it would be kind of no, ridiculous. No, you, you, know? you would only be able to scout one vehicle at a time. Yeah. And then you'd have to wait for the reload, as with the spotting mechanic and, it is, and its current. And, um, you know, um, it could be quite easily countered by, um, you know, SPAA, or maybe have it that, you know, you can only do it at low ranges, so it makes it easier for SPAA to shoot you down. Yes. So there are plenty of ways to counter it and balance it out, but it's just an interesting concept that I thought would be pretty interesting to see. Yeah, the, the only thing I'd be worried about is if one team has a ton of recon planes on it and the other team has none. So you have a massive imbalance of power. Uh, so I think, kind of like how we do with bombers, where they are limited to four a match, I would probably, I would personally limit recon planes or recon in general if they're not able to, you know, uh, if they're not able to uh, fight back. I would probably limit them to maybe one or two a match, just so you're not annihilating the killing power of one team in favor of being oh, able yeah, to see definitely, stuff. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be definitely also something to consider. I mean, if you were doing and stuff it would be very helpful if you're in a squad and it would be helpful you know if you're in a team but again what i've noticed in war thunder is that unless you're in a squad the majority of people on your team don't really take into account what other members of the team does yeah if you get what i mean so i think that um whilst it's a very good fear i think that just human nature in general would also uh, counter it if no squads were involved yeah, there is, as I've said many times, like, it's, uh, it's kind of weird how War Thunder is a team game which is led by solo individuals. Uh, it's just, 
it's it's odd and i hope with more mechanics such as scouting uh i hope we do get more teamwork over time and uh, with world war mode which is also uh you know promoting that stuff it's uh, very nice to see more people coming together to be able to fight alongside each other which is uh, really really nice Definitely. and again in stuff like world war mode you could quite easily balance around uh, spotting planes maybe having again one or two per match yeah, it'd just be something to spice things up a bit because you don't really see many new mechanics for aircraft. I mean, for tanks, we've had smoke, we've had radar, we've had stabilizers. And for planes, we've, you know, and, and you know, with tanks as well, we've had surface to air missiles. With aircraft, we've had air to air missiles and, you know, the, the bloody uh, radar as well. But it would be just something nice for an aircraft, uh, you know, it'd just be a nice new mechanic for aircraft. Yeah, I agree, and it would. Um, one one of the things that's nice to see is it like it, it's really nice seeing like the uh, radar jammers, or it's really nice to see, uh, you know, stuff like air to air missiles. But I am much more interested in mechanics which affect more of the game than just top tier. Uh, so a, a mechanic like this would definitely do that and therefore it would be open to more people therefore more people could experience it and I think that's a key thing in War Thunder we should definitely you know, make sh we should try and promote mechanics which benefit most of the tech trees uh, so you know, uh, more people can experience them instead of it just being locked away for a specific few people at the top of the uh, at the top of the echelon yeah, and also, I mean, keep in mind, practically every nation has spotter planes. So, you yeah. know, there wouldn't be any problem with implementing it for all nations either. So that's the good thing. About yeah, I agree. Anyway, Seth, uh, do you have any uh, last uh, comments or queries for the chat or for the live stream? Um, no, uh, not particularly. Uh, just thanks for having me on. Thanks for being on, Seth. It's always uh, a pleasure no talking to you. Okay. See you later, bud. So, uh, that is going to be the last uh, of the Fireside uh, chats, you know, people. Uh, because, well, to be honest, I have stuff to do. And uh, this is a short one. And we will be back on Sunday, either 11am or 1pm PST. As long as there isn't a dev server, uh, I will be here and I will be uh, streaming just like this again. So if you want to come on, if you want to uh, come onto the stream and have a chat about anything uh, to do with War Thunder or any other topic, make sure to do that. And also, as well, if you have a question but you don't want to come onto the stream, uh, you can definitely put it in the Q&A for tech and I'll make sure to read it on the stream and give you a uh, answer. So I'll just do that uh, right now and uh, I'll make sure to uh, go through them and then I'll end the stream there. So thank you all for joining and let's go. So from Frustration or AJ as we know him, lovely member of the community, always wonderful to talk to. Uh, what do you think of the emplacement in War Thunder like AT guns, bunkers, ATGM teams etc in World War? Like one team defending has the option to set up these emplacements and tank hold down holes and dragon's teeth. We have definitely uh, seen a push into that in World War mode. I like the idea that we're getting more AI in. I like the idea that there's a bunch of AT guns around it's definitely in it's uh, it's definitely in its infancy uh, when it comes to a lot of stuff uh, but for me I it would be wonderful to see an expansion of that into other areas the only thing I'm worried about uh, is when we played uh, the operation Northwind one thing I really saw a lot of uh, was when we were on the offensive as the Americans, uh, the 75s were just chewing us apart. We got killed more by 75s than we did enemy players. And I don't want the balance of power to be given to the AI over the actual players. Uh, so that is one thing uh, that I am worried about. But I do want to see more of an expansion uh, into the... Uh, into the ideas of AI in the game. 
uh, Mark One Raven says for the Fireside podcast, I remember talking with friends about this idea. It consists of dynamic maps using the in game map as vanilla templates. Then you can use in game assets that generate cover, like tank wrecks that get shuffled in position or type of wreck every game, or to use debris to close and restrict or restrict a road one game, but in another game of the same map, another road in the opposite parts of the map is closed. This idea exists to give another dynamic in making your approach or to defend the cap, like when rushing uh, the cap in one game, uh, you have the cover that protects your approach, but in the next one, the same approach is a kill zone that requires a constant smoke barrier to cut a uh, line of sight. To make the players improvise in game and to randomize some power locations and kill zones. The thing is, right, so these ideas sound interesting. I, I like the idea of uh, maps being dynamic. There has to be a conversation at the end of the day, though. How much do you make the maps dynamic? Because uh, they're. There are maps out in War Thunder that have been around for two to three years, and I don't think people have fully worked out how to properly play those maps yet. And if you throw in this idea of a dynamic gameplay uh, when it comes to the destruction of the map, it can set it can confuse people a hell of a lot. Uh, even though it would add more variation to the game, I think it would annoy a lot of people as well because it would be like, well, uh, whatever happens from both sides. If if you decide to shut off one area compared to another, people will see this as giving an advantage to one team over another. Whereas if you have a map which is set up in a way that it doesn't change every time, you know for a fact uh, you can work around those ideas. But if it changes constantly, or changes in many different variations, then there are going to be variations which favor one side over the other. And then we get into the idea of who... Uh, you know, should should we create unbalanced maps? Is it okay to do this? Blah, 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 all of that stuff. Uh, so the main, the main thing for me is I do like the idea of dynamic, uh, dynamic variability when it comes to maps. I like the idea of being able to knock down a house and kind of block off a road <laughs> and things like that. I am just so worried about uh, giving advantages to one side over another, uh, which you only will know about until it's when it's too late, which is when you're actually sat there going, oh, this road is blocked off, I thought it wouldn't be. So, yeah, it, that is, that's definitely a problem I see in my mind, but I do like the idea. If it can be balanced in a way that makes sense, like maybe if one if one side gets its uh, you know main road cut off, maybe the other side does too, then okay, uh, yeah, uh, why not? Uh, if it's not done like that though, few issues. What is your take on the Vickers Wellesley, the absolute chad of a plane, being added to the game? So this is from Nathan Clawfish, uh, who is a moderator over at the Tech Hub. He's a wonderful lad. Uh, always uh, got a smile on his face and a joke on his uh, joke in his mouth. This is the Wellesley. If you don't know what it is, it is a... <laughs> it is a... Uh, well, let's just call it a disgusting plane. And if you want to know about it... Yeah. I'll make sure to show it to you in the Wikipedia page. 1930s long-range bomber. Oh, well, not really long-range bomber, but, you know, uh, the, that was the general idea of it. A light-range, a light bomber, I should say. 177 produced, so, of course, uh, this should be in the game. And you can see that it was used from 1937, used in 1940s, even 1941, and uh, was used also, uh, it was exported to a lot of places. You can see that the general design of it, like this is, uh, I believe, one of the earlier designs. Look how disgusting this plane is. Uh, it is just, <laughs> it, it, it looks like it's a, it's a dual plane, right? And you can see here in this picture, which looks kind of uh, fake, uh, but I'm guessing this is like an artist's interpretation of it, that uh, it is set up in a way where you have the gunner on the back to keep it alive, 
and also uh, some other areas. But yeah, it's uh, it. I think it should come to the game. I mean, technically, uh, if you want to say it was mass produced, uh, if you want some of the statistics on the thing, you know, it was incredibly slow. You know, we're talking 228 miles an hour here. It had a seven point. It had a 303 uh, Vickers uh, kind of uh, Blenheim style in the right wing. It had a 303 in the rear cockpit, which I'm sure, as you can see from this picture, could be upgraded to a quad and 2,000 pounds worth of bombs. Uh, so very similar to some other machines uh, that you will have seen in the past. It is just, God, it's, it's another one of those wonderful machines which looks absolutely disgusting. And uh, we can only uh, thank the British uh, for creating these monstrosities. Uh, <laughs> and then let's go to the next question. What are your thoughts, uh, this is from Backpack Marine, what are your thoughts about the idea of giving the M8 Buford light tank and the Vickers Mark V to the American and British tech trees as top rank light tanks, as well as giving the MGM-166 low sat kinetic energy missile variations uh, to said vehicles, also including the M2 Bradley and the HMMWV variations for America. The interesting part is the missile is a solid penetrator that goes, if I recall, around Mach 4.4, uh, to my sources and calculations. I like the ideas of adding more variations in playstyle to the top tiers, and stuff like the Buford would add this. Uh, the MA Buford actually got past the development recently. I think it might have been in the last few months or so. If you don't know what the Buford is, this is the picture that Backpack Marine used. Uh, it's a stabilized... Uh, I think it's a 105, right? Uh, and uh, it's... As I said, if you want more information on it, there's a really nice article on it that got passed for consideration. So, yeah, it's, uh, it is, I, I, at top tiers, and mainly though at mid tiers and low tiers, light tanks are still not as, not really powerful, but, uh, there, there are a lot more options that could be added to the game right now, and these do facilitate, uh, some of those options. So, of course, I'd like to see them added. The question is, do we give them scouting? And I, I think yes. I think we do. Uh, so, the Losat M8 and the <laughs> Losat on the Vickers Mark V chassis and all of the other ones, I think, will eventually come to the game as well. Uh, you know, uh, with, with the fact that uh, we will get more missile-carried vehicles. And uh, the, the Soviets have some crazy ones. The Americans have some crazy ones. So, I'm looking forward to them. And uh, Chapescu says, what's happening with the squadron vehicles? And uh, the squadron vehicles, if I remember correctly, uh, Esmin made a post about the squadron vehicles. Let's just see if I can find it. Uh, because he basically said that they were having a technical issue. And uh, the reason for it was... Uh, Let's see, would it be here? I'm not sure. But yeah, the um, basically they were having issues uh, with uh, adding them in. Uh, because, uh, and I think the, the, the narrative that I saw was uh, since they're squadron vehicles, you, you're going to need squadron activity to be able to get them. And I think there is an issue with either Xbox players or something like that, where they can't join specific squadrons or uh, any squadrons. Or That's all I've heard. I'm not sure if it's true or not, uh, but that is the narrative that's going around. If they're running into other issues, uh, one thing I will say is on the dev server, they got rid of the text file, which meant that you couldn't see them. Uh, so I am sure that when update 1.89 comes out, that either these will come shortly afterwards or they will be dropped with 1.89. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's uh, it. I've been looking forward to them for a long time. I hope that uh, personally that they, you know, come. Uh, the Firecrest uh, is going to be absolutely awful. The M901 should be pretty good, and that uh, boat will be a monstrosity uh, because it's a it's a better version of the PR159. And if you don't know what the PR159 is, it's a frigate that annihilates destroyers. And uh, this has the same guns <laughs> and uh, also has access to some stuff such as homing torpedoes if they ever add them. Uh, so yeah, good luck with that. 
Anyway, uh, that is the last of the questions. Uh, the last comment is from Nathan. It says, Moth demons are to blame. And uh, that's always true. And always will be. So anyway, uh, just, a short just a short stream for today. I'll make sure to make it longer on Sunday. And from me and from everyone else, I just want to thank Thomas McCloudy for uh, helping me sort out uh, the guests which were on today. And if you want to be a guest... Make sure that you join the Tech Hub, and then when uh, you know when it says uh, I'm live on the Fireside Chat, make sure to uh, DM the correct individual, and uh, bring you can be brought in to have a chat with me and also with everybody else. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.